Today is an historic day as Israel's 36th government is set to be sworn in. And assuming there are no last-minute surprises, this will mark the end of Benjamin Netanyahu's 12-year term as prime minister, the longest-serving prime minister in Israel's history. The unity government, or as it's being called, Coalition of Change, includes a broad spectrum of political parties from the right and the left and will include 27 ministerial positions. Let's take a look at the new government. At the head of the unity government, we have Yamina's Naftali Bennett. And he's making history today because for the first time, the designated prime minister will not come from the largest party, which remains in Taniao's Likud, but rather from the second smallest faction in the Knesset. Next, we have the head of Yeshatid Yair Lapid, who is second in the rotation, meaning he will replace Naftali Bennett as prime minister in the second half of the rotation. In the meantime, he will serve as the foreign minister. Blue and White's leader Benny Gantz will remain in his post as defense minister. He served in the, in the Netanyahu-led government and prior to the collapse of the previous coalition was set to become prime minister in a rotation agreement with Netanyahu. Then we have Israel Beitenu, head of Vigdo Lieberman, who will serve as the finance minister. Merav Michaeli, head of the Labour Party and one of nine female ministers in the new government. She will serve as transportation minister. Then we have New Hope Party leader Gidon Sal, who will serve as the Justice Minister. Nitzan Horowitz, head of the left-wing Meretz Party, will serve as Israel's new Health Minister. Walisa Weifred will become the second Muslim in history to serve as a minister. He will take the post of Regional Cooperation Minister. Ifat Shasabiton from New Hope, who made headlines in Israel this past year for her opposition to Netanyahu's policies regarding the coronavirus, will become the next Education Minister while Yamina Zayelet Sheked, second to Naftali Bennett, will become the Interior Minister. There are, of course, a number of additional ministers ranging from the Interior Security Ministry to be headed by Omer Barlev, the Diaspora Affairs Ministry to be headed by Nachman Shai of Labor, to the Tourism Ministry to be headed by Yoel Rosbozov of Yeshatid, and to the Welfare Ministry to be headed by Meir Cohen of Yeshatid, to name a few. And if all goes according to plan, the new government will be sworn in tonight in the presence of Israel's President, Ruvi Rivlin. The ceremony for the transfer of the ministries is set to take place Monday morning. Now, reaching a deal for the unity government was no easy task. The coalition agreements were finalized at the last minute ahead of the 4 p.m. deadline on Friday. Let's take a look at what they entail. Yesh Atid head Yair Lapid finalized the coalition agreements with the seven other parties in the new government. Yamina, New Hope, Blue and White, Israel Beitenu, Labor, Meretz and Ram. The new coalition includes 61 members, a slight majority in the 120-seat Knesset. With the signing of the agreements, Naftali Bennett said that it brings an end to two and a half years of political crisis, saying his government will work for all the Israeli public, religious, secular, ultra-Orthodox and Arab without exception. While Lapid said the government would place the good of the country at the top of its agenda, saying all the partners are committed first and foremost to the people of Israel. The coalition issued a list outlining the key issues and principles of the new government, and they include establishing a state commission of inquiry into the tragic events on Lagba Omer, in which 45 people were killed on Mount Meron in northern Israel. The coalition will also work to establish two new hospitals, one in the Negev in the south and one in the Galilee in the north, as well as build a new university in the Galilee and will establish another airport. With regards to religion, the coalition will seek to support competition and kosher services, will establish an egalitarian prayer section at the Western Wall, and will change the voting body that elects the chief rabbi of Israel to ensure that a Zionist rabbi is elected. Additionally, the coalition will work to further promote LGBTQ rights in Israel. With regards to judicial reform, the new coalition seeks to split the position of the Attorney General into two. Additionally, the new coalition aims to introduce term limits on the position of Prime Minister, lower the cost of housing by building an additional 300,000 housing units, and submit a transportation plan for the West Bank. The coalition also seeks to crack down on illegal building in the West Bank. Another aspect of the coalition agreements includes an investment of some 2.5 billion shekels in fighting crime in the Arab sector, as well as bolstering the Arab communities through transportation and infrastructure. The new government will also seek to bolster Israel's status as a startup nation, setting a national goal for bringing the total number of high-tech workers in the economy to 15% of the labor force by 2026. As such, the unity government has set out a number of lofty ambitions. Whether or not they will be able to achieve all these goals, time will tell.